everyone. All right, so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Dares to Cinema 4D Bridge plugin. So we finally have a bridge plugin that allows us to send out Dares characters like this, even with clothing, directly over to Cinema 4D with all of the materials created for us automatically. So it's a huge time saver. You get to actually convert these materials if you're using V-Ray, Redshift, or Octane. So that's another huge time saver. And you can even convert the character to an IK rig. So with the IK rig, if I just go to the scene over here, I'll actually be able to pose my character. If we just pay attention to the viewport over here, I can actually pose my character directly in Cinema 4D. So this plugin is actually fantastic and I want to show you how to set everything up. So I hope you're ready and without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so check the link in the description of the top comment. It'll take you over to this part of the DAS 3D website so that you have access to the DAS Bridge. Just make sure that you actually create an account on DAS 3D so that you can sign into the website because when you sign in, you'll actually see these different versions available over here. Now, I already downloaded the Blender and Cinema 4D version. That's why you don't see it over here. But you'll go ahead, add that to your cart and then you just want to click on your cart and check out and it's basically going to add that file into the DAS install manager so once you've checked out from the DAS website uh, over here in your windows whenever you install DAS 3D you'll actually gain access to a program called DAS install manager so go ahead open up the DAS install manager and sign into the DAS install manager it'll be the exact same uh, login details that you use to sign into the DAS 3D website and once you sign into the DAS install manager you'll head over to ready to download and you'll see over here that there's a, a DAS to Cinema 4D now I already have mine under installed so it'll basically be DAS to Cinema 4D go ahead click on that and you'll go ahead and click on download and it will download it and install it into DAS 3D. It's also going to ask you which version of Cinema 4D are you using. So make sure you install it into the appropriate version. Then once you're done with that, we can head over to DAS 3D. All right, so in DAS 3D, just to, to make sure that you have the same workspace as me, go to Window, Workspace, select Layout, and I'm using the Hollywood Boulevard and then just click on Accept. Okay, so uh, with the DAS install manager, if you've installed the Genesis 3 and Genesis 8 male and female, you should see it available over here. Otherwise, just open up DAS install manager and download that. So I'm going to be using a Genesis 8 basic female for this tutorial. I'm going to double click on this. It's going to create my character. I'm just quickly going to put some basic clothes in the character so that this video does not get flagged for nudity. All right, so we got our character in the A pose, and this will be perfect if you're going to use the IK rig in Cinema 4D because the IK rig is basically going to reset the pose and put it back into the A pose anyway, and you'll be able to repose that in Cinema 4D. But let's say I want to create my own custom pose in DAS, so I'll do something very basic. Just maybe move her feet down like that, move her arms, and maybe just tilt her head to the, to the side. All right, so I've created a custom pose in DAS, and under the parameters over here, You'll see if I go to pose controls, I've got a whole lot of different sliders over here and morphs. And it's basically going to export out all of these morphs and you'll be able to use them in Cinema 4D as well. So if I want to uh, basically apply a smile onto a face, I'll be able to just adjust the slider directly in Cinema 4D. So once we're done and we've got our pose, you want to go to scene and make sure the Genesis 8, uh, Genesis 8 female is selected. So even this clothing is a child of the Genesis 8. So everything is contained within here. You can see I've got this box selection. Now if I go to scripts, bridges, and there, there we go. You can see DAS or Cinema 4D. So just click on that. It's going to convert and prepare the file. So I've got quite a bunch of morphs that it's going to be preparing over here. So it might take a little bit of time, maybe 30 seconds. But you can see it's preparing everything. And once that's done, uh, I'm basically going to be heading over to Cinema 4D. And I'm going to click on the Cinema 4D plugin to import it. Okay, so to bring the file into Cinema 4D is very simple. If, you if you're using later versions of Cinema 4D, it's called extensions. In earlier versions, it's called plugins. So if you go to extensions, and if you've done everything correctly, you should see DAS to C4D. So just click on that. It brings up this window. And all you have to do is just click on auto import. So there we go. It says, please, please wait. It's importing. So it's going to import our character. And it's automatically going to generate all of the materials for us. So this is where it becomes a huge time saver. It creates all of the materials. You don't have to create these maps from scratch. And this alone is a huge, huge time saver. Okay, so you'll see this menu pops up. You definitely want to go ahead and save the textures. So on my desktop over here, I'm actually going to create a new folder. I'll just call this Daz Go. 
Okay, and then I'll create a folder over here called Textures. All right, go into Textures and just call this Text and then click on Save. Just so I make sure all of those uh, materials are being saved into that folder so everything is nice and organized. So there we go. So it's just saving that out. Just give it a little bit of time. And then you can see over here on this window we have Convert Materials. And like I mentioned, if you're using, okay, there we go, that's done. If you're using V-Ray, Redshift, or Octane, I can go ahead and convert these materials right now. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to click on Octane. And if I click on Convert Materials, it tells you, it gives you this warning message. You cannot undo this, but because I use Octane, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to click on Yes. So there we go, it'll actually go ahead and convert all of these materials to Octane materials. And then I'll resume from there. Okay, so everything is done. All the materials are set up. Huge time saver. I know that's like the third time I'm saying that, but it really is a huge time saver, guys. And there we go, we got our DAS character in here. And if I just bring up, in this case, like I'm using Octane Render. If I go to Cinema 40 Octane and my live viewer and just send the scene over. There we go, you can even see the eyelashes are applied. The only thing that's a huge issue is the Daz eyes. I don't know why these eyes still look like poop, <laughs> but Daz eyes have always looked like poop. Uh, but there is a certain way to fix this. I will show you shortly. Um, but there we go. You can see the eyelashes are being applied on there. We've got the skin material and everything has been sent over. So we've got our custom pose. And I just want to show you the IK rig as well. So let's say if you want to do all of the posing directly in Cinema 4D, I'm just going to click on File New. And since the export from DAS is still saved into the memory or the console of Cinema 4D, I can just click on DAS to Cinema 4D, click on Auto Import again. So it'll import my character. And then I'm going to be showing you the Auto IK rig. So this is if, like I said, if you want to do your own custom pose. Okay, so just let that import. So the IK rig, I'm just going to close that. The IK rig is going to tell me that it's going to reset my pose. So it puts, puts it into the T pose. And if I click on Auto IK now, there we go. So let me show you what the Auto IK allows you to do. So you can see I've got all of these IK joints on here. So I can select something like this and I can move it down. So this is super cool because you can start posing this. You can see I can select the fingers, right? I know there's certain joints that you need to select over here. Oh, there we go. You can see I can start posing the fingertips as well. So you can completely pose and you can animate this character. So let's say I select the waist region over here and I start moving this down. I can make her start doing squats or she starts jumping into the air like that. And this can be animated. So if I create a keyframe over here, maybe go to 90 and now she starts jumping up. Or now she starts levitating and create another keyframe. You can see that's been animated. Right, so it's a really slow levitating jump. And you can obviously add more complexity to that and rotate maybe different joints to make it look a little bit more realistic. But the IK rig inclusion is fantastic. So you get to animate and completely pose your character directly in Cinema 4D. So you don't even need to go back to DAS if you want to go the IK route. And I think it's really cool that you can just pose your character like this. This is very, very cool. All right, so I thought I'd just show you the IK method as well. Okay, so one more thing I want to mention. I've gone back to the custom pose that I created with Daz uh, because I actually don't know where to access this on the IK rig. If you know where or how to access these joints, uh, feel free to comment below. But these joints over here, you can see if I select them, especially on my Dash Genesis Day 8, I've got all of these morphs over here. So if I wanted to, like let's say I wanted to close the character's eyes, I simply just increase the slider. So that can also be animated. I just, I'm not sure how to access this on the IK rig. Uh, so I would definitely appreciate any help if you guys know how to do that. But with the Dash pose that you export, you can select this very easily. And I would go ahead and select all of these joints so that it's universal across everything over here. So now if I wanted to, where is it? I wanted to close the eyes. I make sure that I do it on with everything selected over here. And there we go. So now I can close the character's eyes and I can animate that. So this is fantastic that you have all of these morphs exported as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and open the character's eyes again. 
Okay, so I did mention the eyes and let me just show you a quick fix because right now this looks terrible, right? Let me show you how to fix this in Cinema 4D. Just go ahead and select the Genesis 8 female shape. And now if we go to the polygon selection, all you have to do over here is just double click on this eye to select this region. Right, I'll select it like that and just push this region back a little bit. I don't know what it does, but you can see it actually fixes the eye. Right now we can actually see the iris and everything a lot better. So do it for the other side as well. Again, I think there's some type of intersection issue over here. But if you just push that back a little bit, it actually fixes the, the way the eyes look. Okay, so that's how you fix that. And <laughs> it's a really, really simple fix. And then over here, just to make the eyes look a little bit better, I would actually select, uh, where is this? I would select the pupils. And then I would go to the diffuse. And I would actually increase the gamma a little bit. But actually, wait, not the pupils, sorry, not the pupils. But this is a cool way to control the color of the eye as well. Uh, it's not the pupils, it's, it's the sclera. You know, select the sclera and just darken the sclera a little bit because sometimes the eye is just way too white. And then nearby the eye moisture, uh, maybe you can play around with the index. But another way to make these eyes look a little bit better, if you setting up lighting, I always create an area light like this. Let me just zoom out a bit. And I'll make my area light really small because I want to create that glint, that little uh, reflection on the eye over here. Make this really small like this. You'll see what I mean when I zoom in. It actually makes a huge difference. I'm talking about this this little glint that you see on the eye. All right, there we go. You can see it makes a huge difference. Let me just turn that off. See with it off and you see with it on. That glint that you see on the front of the eyes, I just think adds a little bit more realism. And then by uh, playing around with the gamma of the sclera, just so the eyes are not, sometimes the eyes look completely white like this. And this is just creepy. It looks so fake. You didn't really want to play around a little bit with the gamma. And that's how I make the eyes look a little bit better and just quickly how to fix them uh, directly with Cinema 4D. So I hope this helps. Okay, so that is the end of the tutorial. Now you know how to send over these characters. Obviously, you can go back into Dash, generate a new pose and send it over. Or if you're using the IK rig, you can just continue posing and animating directly in Cinema 4D. We've got all of our material sent over. It's a huge time saver and I hope you guys really like this bridge plugin. I think it's fantastic. Okay, as always, I truly appreciate the support on this channel. Stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials and goodbye.